What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fry School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So Game V and other YouTubers who actually do game performance have posted some footage of Immortals of Avium and the performance on high-end builds. This game seems to be really demanding and apparently it's an Unreal Engine 5 game. And I wanted to highlight a few things. On Twitter, I saw that, you know, people were talking about it using on console a base resolution of 720, uh, you know, and this is on the Series X and the PS5. So I actually went to Digital Foundry to go and see what their metrics look like. And I was quite surprised to see what Digital Foundry came up with overall in regard to the console versions of the game. It brings me back to my conversation where I already said that consoles are struggling already. They already had been struggling. Now, it's 2023. People are much more open to listening to that message. When I said this during the release of Gotham Knights, a lot of people said I was crazy and so on and so forth. But then once we started to get some games that had some performance challenges, especially in the Unreal Engine scene, I think now a lot more people are willing to pay close attention to what is going on. Now, the challenge that this game has faced when it came to the you know console version was just image quality because the resolution has been upscaled heavily. It just seemed like, man, the game doesn't look so great. I mean, from what you can see here in Digital Foundry's video, you know, you're starting to see that, you know, this these consoles are just already aged. And even when you go look at, say, uh, a YouTuber like Bang for Buck Gamer, uh, you know, his videos, he usually uses high end gear as well, but he's using DLSS. You get to see that there's a little bit more quality overall. But at the end of the day, it even tells you that 4K scaling and 4K resolution is not something that is easily achieved, even with the hardware that we have today. And I think game developers and game designers all have to kind of come to terms of what it is that they have going on when it comes to the scale of their games. So we'll talk about a few more uh, you know, aspects of this whole conversation. We'll look at, say, you know, the Unreal Engine paradigm and something that I want to go ahead and talk about here. Uh, this is Game V's video, and he was getting in some of the you know open world areas, he was getting as little as 40 something FPS. Many of you remember, though, if you pay attention to Jedi, you remember that Jedi Survivor was also going through something like this as well. So this is not a surprise for me. Uh, you know, this is something that we ought to just pay very close attention and we kind of have to understand the technical side of what's going on with a lot of these games, especially when in the past we've had some games that looked very good that didn't have many issues going on with them. Now, the very first thing that you have to go ahead and pay close attention to is every video game is different, number one, and you also have to consider the engine of which, uh, you know, a game is developed in. So first of all, the Arkham games that look very good or the Spider-Man games and so on and so forth, they use different engines. The Arkham games used Unreal Engine 3, whereas games like Gotham Knights, Jedi Survivor, Jedi Fallen Order, and this Immortals of Avium game now are using Unreal Engine, you know, 4 slash 5. 4 and 5, they have a lot of similarities, but the new technology in 5 seems to have its challenges as well. So how developers are making their games in Unreal Engine 4 slash 5 is actually very critical and very important. In my opinion, I think if you're making an Unreal Engine game, that game probably should not delve into the open world side of things. Now, the reason developers use Unreal Engine or publishers sanction the use of Unreal Engine is because a lot of these publishers are kind of, in a sense, cheap in, the, in regard to wanting to use an engine that has a lot of knowledge around it. A lot of people already know how to use Unreal Engine and it's free to access basically until you sell about a million dollars. That's when you eventually then begin to start doing profit sharing with them. So your first million dollars using an Unreal Engine, uh, you know, uh, paradigm or the setup is actually free. And then after that, you start giving Epic its own percentage and its own cut. And then you also give your cuts to other you know, platforms that you're selling your game on. So there is an incentive to use it. And also a lot of game developers and game designers know how the engine works because when they go to school or college or game university or maybe they're on YouTube University or Udemy learning, Unreal Engine has a lot of resources to teach and even Epic Games themselves give out a lot of resources. So the engine just has the accessibility that a lot of people would probably not believe that it does. It's all over the place. So these are the reasons you see a lot of video games using Unreal Engine, even though Unreal Engine is not necessarily the greatest for these open world titles, they or semi open world titles, depending on how you look at it, they continue to use them as such. If you even go ahead and look at, say, something like the Matrix, um, you know, 
uh, the demo on Unreal Engine, that was also really interesting. But that demo itself ran at 30 FPS as well. There was, you know, if you kind of go ahead and think about how all of these um, games have run in the past, you'll realize that this has been, uh, you know, kind of hinted informally in the past. Because even with that Matrix demo and all that was going on and you could see, uh, you know, the the way the gameplay was, it looked really smooth. But the developers locked it at 30 FPS to be able to achieve the smooth gameplay, even though it was fast paced and so on and so forth. We just are not at the point where there is the ubiquitous nature of uh, hardware that can run these high uh, visuals, high graphics, fast action, visual effects, all this stuff at 60 fps native 4k resolution and so on and so forth so 30 fps seems like it's going to continue to remain and continue to be the in quote standard for a minute until developers are able to start to scale their games appropriately or until engines are able to kind of figure out how to do more compression in terms of how visuals are going to work and flow in these big games this is the you know in my opinion anyways this is where we're stuck at and as for me and my position when it comes to, you know, the current consoles and the current gen of consoles, I've always been a big, huge advocate for saying gamers ought to start looking at the possibility of switching to playing on PC. Yes, I know PC has a little bit more of an expense to it, but you can use the build market to your advantage or you can use the opportunity when it comes to you wanting to upgrade your console to actually make that switch happen and start saving right now so that you can get yourself a decent build. The reason you're getting a decent build is not because, oh, the game is going to run much better and so on and so forth. In a sense, yes, that's going to happen for the most part. But the fact that you have the opportunity to be able to scale your machine is the biggest side where a lot of PC gamers actually enjoy. There's no doubt that the you know capability of adding RAM or the capability of switching out your CPU to be able to give you much more in terms of frame and in much more in terms of performance, uh, you know, there's no doubt that that is something that is attractive to a lot of folk. So if you really are interested or concerned about visuals and so on and so forth, you cannot necessarily guarantee that you're going to get that from the consoles because there is already a limitation in hardware. And now we're seeing even a limitation uh, of hardware with specific and more ubiquitous software, and that is on real engine. So again, it goes back to the companies that are using their in-house engine to actually pull it off because in-house engine is also a whole different beast. If you actually think about it, I mean, consider say uh, another game that's going to be coming out this year, uh, this next year, anyway, Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. It's using Unreal Engine 4. The game already was having challenging issues in its gameplay reveal uh, or its uh, PlayStation showcase where they actually played it on PC rather than on the PlayStation 5, which was wild. And then you're going to see Hogwarts Legacy also had some challenges as well so there is something that's telling that perhaps the games that unreal engine probably supports are games that are spec to be very uh in my opinion curated in a specific kind of way developers cannot run crazy there is a game that has done well that is semi open semi linear in a sense and that's uh immortals uh mortal shell sorry i said immortals so mortal shell seems like it did very well uh in the sense that it came out in a good time its developers were able to scale the game in a way and use some really interesting tricks to run the game at very decent performance i don't really know if i heard of any performance issues at the time it came out but that you know and they used unreal engine 4 but that game did not have a lot of the open world aspects to it and so on and so forth so I think it was probably easier for them to be able to implement their game without dealing with a lot of performance issues. Perhaps this should be the games that, you know, on, that are using Unreal Engine to be, you know, to implement what it is that they want to implement. And then if a developer finds out that they want to make a game that is ambitious, then they probably have to start looking for custom solutions that get the job done. This is why many people may ask questions like, well, you know, how come this other game is doing it, whereas this game isn't doing that? Well, you have to consider, you know, the game engine. You cannot necessarily abandon the game engine and then expect that, you know, you're going to be seeing those same results. It just doesn't work like that. If you actually go ahead and you, you know, took into account uh, all the things that developers have to put in place, you're going to realize that, you know, it's not always the case. Like if we even give some examples of, say, uh, you know, Ubisoft or, you know, look at, say, their Division 2 game and how the game actually looks compared to other games, you'll realize that they're actually using other techniques, like actually running the game, uh, you know, on 
or parts of the game on their servers and not necessarily having to run the entire game on your console. So that split work is actually allowing for them to be able to get better performance to run huge open world. But their Star Wars game right now, if you actually look at the game in terms of the gameplay, you'll realize that that game, from what I saw anyways, it just seemed like the game had a little bit of a you know challenge when you actually made its way to the open world aspect of uh, you know the game's design and so on and so forth. But this is, in my opinion, something that we're going to see a lot happen in a lot of these video games. And I would not be surprised if we eventually start to see like, you know, textures and visuals kind of get a little, uh, you know, toned down when the when the full game comes out. Uh, and but this game doesn't look as good as the division. But I understand that because the game is running fully or will be running fully on your machine. So not unless you're on PC, are you going to be able to enjoy that scaling that, you know, the, the Snowdrop engine is able to deliver and you'll be able to, you know, give texture details depending on the strength or the power of your machine. But if you're going to be playing on the consoles, I think what's going to happen is you're going to be relegated to the textures of the Assassin's Creed style, you know, paradigms and so on and so forth, which can be done. But then when it comes to vehicular combat and and vehicular movement, we don't necessarily know how that's going to look like on the consoles. So it's going to be interesting to see how these things are executed overall. But that's pretty much my own, uh, you know, thoughts so far. You know, my thought process on this is actually very straightforward. This is a very, very interesting time we are in gaming. So I encourage everyone who is looking into this to, you know, continue to pay more attention and maybe possible, possibly start learning a little bit more about what game development actually entails. It will really give you a better understanding of what it is that we're seeing here. But shout out to the developers who were able to make this game. I'm not sitting here dev blaming. I know people will say things like developers don't know how to optimize games. But I guarantee you, if they gave you this game file and asked you to optimize it any better, you'll probably not even know where to start. So those people who say things like that, you ought to be able to put yourself in a position where you understand the technological limitations and the technological advantages that are actually here. This kind of game would have probably benefited from a custom engine that is designed to render all this. Unreal Engine is developed for a broad solution uh, you know, as, as a broad solution platform, it's you can use it to make movies, product design, all of that stuff compared to like a game engine where everything is actually streamlined and positioned to just deliver a video game. But again, this is what brings me back to my conversation and saying that game you know, publishers are a little cheap because they're probably wanting to go for the possibility of not having to do too much in terms of training, because when you bring in a new developer into your ecosystem, you're going to have to now teach them how to use your engine and so on and so forth. So it might just be easier to just say, let's just use a real engine. And then, you know, wherever we get to, things are going to eventually be that way. So this may mean locking those 30 FPS games at 30 FPS once again. So it's not necessarily the end of the world. But again, if you care about visual 60 FPS and so on and so forth, you know that you have PC platform as something that can actually provide that quality for you. Thanks for watching. We'll talk pretty soon, hopefully in another one. Peace out.